Well, hello, what's happening? Tim Warner here. I want to talk to you about navigating enterprise big business. First of all, as a disclaimer, you might have noticed that I've got three rats in the cage in the background. They mean a lot to me. My 13 year old daughter Zoe and I co parent three rats. They're three brothers. We got them from a breeder. Funny stories about them, but just I'll say it is what it is <laughs> to reference a video I did the other day. Uh, Anyway, don't want to burn up any more time on the rats. Maybe another time. The focus here is enterprise big business. Over my career, I've worked in the smallest and largest of environments. The smallest would be where I contract as myself, because there I am the entire company. And that's nice, because there's eminent freedom. The downside is that it's all on me. In fact, one reason why I've always preferred to be a salaried employee first and then do moonlighting contract stuff on the side. Even though technically I could probably make a lot more money just being a freelancer full time. That it just boils down to my personality. It's important to me, especially because I have a family and responsibilities, to have the reliability of a recurring check, uh, health insurance benefits, life insurance contributions to retirement. That kind of structure means the world to me. Anyway, on the larger side, I would say the two largest businesses I've worked for are Microsoft and Pearson. Both of these are multinational, multi-continental organizations with employees spread all over, all around the world, hundreds of thousands of employees. And that, whether you're working in IT or not, poses its own sets of challenges. Even at that point, even if you're working in a physical office, you're still dealing with enterprise big business. Now, my case is a bit different in as much as I've worked as a remote employee for at least 15 years. So I've probably got more experience in my career as a remote employee than I do as an office show up employee. Therefore, the pandemic didn't affect my day to day work at all. Fortunately, I know that Working for home, from home is not a, a good fit for everybody, and the pandemic really caused a lot of stress for people who were not equipped to work from home. But in an enterprise big business, like I mentioned, even if you did report to an office, it's just one office among a number of offices. So by default, you're working remotely to some degree or another. And to that point, I have some important guidance for you if you're newer to working in this kind of environment to make it easier. I often say as a mantra that in order to be successful in the information technology field, you need to adopt an attitude of always learning. You're constantly sharpening the saw. In my experience, when you're working for an enterprise big business that's distributed, your task is to be Sherlock Holmes. Your task is to be a detective. In fact, when I worked at Microsoft most recently, I spent the first months, not just with the traditional job onboarding, but I took it upon myself to build the most robust professional network I could. In other words, just the activities of daily work would involve me receiving questions and thinking about things that I had no clue how to find an answer to. So that forced me into looking, for example, in Microsoft's internal directories, of which there's a lot. I give Microsoft a lot of credit for wrangling all that chaos. Uh, asking question after question after question. Another nice thing that Microsoft does that helps this is they uh, assign new hires to an onboarding buddy, a more experienced colleague. And that person can be very instrumental to help shorten that learning curve. But in enterprise big business, the metaphor I think of sometimes, particularly when you're new to the job, is imagine standing in the middle of a warehouse that's pitch black and you just have a match. So you can see just what's barely in front of you. 
And so the task being Sherlock Holmes and undertaking all this research and reaching out and meeting new people virtually most of the time through email or Teams or Slack, whatever it is that you're using. But you're making these connections with the goal of eventually having a network, a spider web, such that when the next question comes up that you can't answer or the next task that you're facing that you're not sure where to go or, or who to talk to, you do have somebody to talk to, maybe not directly to answer the question, but you know somebody who knows somebody. So that notion of professional networking is crucial when working for an enterprise big business. And I think that you'll find that that, that network building is bi-directional. One of the most satisfying things, thinking of my time at Microsoft, was once I had put in the time to develop a list of contacts for different things. If I'm looking for such and so, I should contact them. If I'm looking for this other, I should contact them. And I literally track this in OneNote or some organizational tool to help me remember. But then when I receive questions that I can't answer, I can give my, I can make a recommendation, I can make an introduction because I uh, don't know the answer, I know who does. So I could patch people through and put them together. And that further strengthens that professional network web, for, for lack of a better term. So important. I would say it's a mandatory skill to survive an enterprise big business. Because otherwise, how are you going to get any work done? In the worst case scenario, what I've seen happen is individuals on their work teams reinventing the proverbial wheel, being faced with a, a challenge, and not even thinking of taking advantage of all the institutional knowledge that exists elsewhere. And they just bump, 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 and grind and come up with a solution. But meanwhile, this group over here that could be physically on the other side of the globe or it could be in the next office building. They've already been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. If only we had known, we could have saved ourselves all this work and effort. I submit that on a daily basis, there's a lot of lost productivity opportunities because of that. So if you're in a position of leadership, what I would recommend you to do is to amass this knowledge somewhere, have, build knowledge bases, which again, Microsoft, to their great credit, they, they wear the heck out of Azure DevOps, and including the wiki boards. There's a lot of great institutional knowledge to be found within Microsoft. I, think they, they, I wish they'd open source some of that knowledge a little bit more to help other businesses. But just to increase that awareness, to make it easier to find people who have particular skill sets, that's one of the golden nuggets of working for an enterprise big business. There's somebody on staff who knows exactly what the best next thing to do is or has fantastic feedback on your idea. The question is, how the heck do you know where they are so you can find them? So I guess to summarize, I would say, one, dive in to any and all documentation, knowledge bases, knowledge aggregations that your enterprise big business offers and evangelize that to your colleagues so everybody's buying in and contributing. Number two, work on professional networking deluxe. Make those contacts. When somebody reaches out to you, write back. People appreciate that. I know I do. When I get a response, I definitely appreciate that and don't take that for granted. And I think that you'll find that as a nice side effect, by serving as a point person, because you know who does what and you can make references, you're increasing your value to your work team and to your organization across the, the whole. And of course, that's a legit concern. You know, that notion of you might be a big fish in a small pond at a small organization, but then if you work for Amazon or Microsoft, it's much more difficult to stand out from the crowd because you're standing among tens of thousands of others who have similar skill sets to you. There's no question that there's validity to that. So by having this wider spectrum knowledge and understanding, 
I would submit that it increases your value to the organization and increases, by definition, your visibility. And that's always a good thing, is to have as much positive visibility as possible. Uh, and that can pay dividends, literally, when it comes time to your next performance review or being considered for a promotion or whatever the case might be. So there you have it. I hope that you found that meditation on enterprise big business useful. I look forward to catching you in the next episode. Thanks a lot. See ya.